Hey guys, what's up? This week I wanted to get back to the military to MBA topic and make a video that'll help you get into the best business school for you. I recently went through the B school application process myself and I got into every school I applied to round two after not even getting an interview round one. And I'll be going to Wharton in the fall. If you wanna know what I learned between my round one and two applications, I made a video on that and I'll put that in the description below. Today I wanna to take all the things I learned from the business school process and make an ideal calendar on how to go from military to MBA on a five year timeline. This five year timeline is really common for a lot of officers, especially for the people coming out of military academies. So that's really kind of why I wanted to make this one. I myself was on a four year timeline and I actually made a video on that and I'll also put that in the description below. This talks about the ideal timeline between graduation, taking the GMAT, getting into the military, looking at school, starting to apply, and all of that. Really, these are just meant to set you up for success for if you wanna to go to business school in the future. It's not saying that you have to, it's just, it's giving you an option. Before I start, I just wanna say I do not suggest joining the military as a way to get into a top business school. I think if you do that, you're gonna have a terrible time, you're not gonna get the jobs and experiences you need because you're not doing it for the right reasons and you won't be able to do as well as other people who are really into it. And you're just not gonna have the same learnings, which will make it difficult on your business school applications because you won't have the same stories to tell, you won't have as strong as a resume, etc. But for those of you who really wanna join the military and think you might wanna go to business school at some point, I really think doing the military can be an excellent way of getting experiences and skills that business schools really value. So without further ado, here's what I would consider an ideal five-year timeline for military to MBA. Unlike the four-year timeline, I suggest taking the GMAT in mid-September instead of August. The GMAT's good for five years, and since you're gonna be doing five years of service, it's gonna be tight as it is in terms of taking the GMAT before you really get started and having it be good when you're when you're getting ready to apply to business schools. But if you take it in mid-September, you might be able to squeak out another year. For example, if you took the GMAT September 15th, 2020, it's good till September 15th, 2025. So if you can't do your applications in 2024, like it would be ideal for for this situation, you might still be able to do some round one applications in September of 2025. For example, Harvard's round one application is due before September 15th, so you could apply again September 2025 and still have your GMAT be good. It's ideal to take the GMAT or GRE before you get started and before you go to Bullock because for some obvious reasons, one, your knowledge on things on the GMAT or GRE are gonna be highest when you're graduating from college. It should come as no surprise that the Army is not gonna help you with sentence structure or chicken Econometry or anything like that. And two, it'll help you get this out of the way so that when you do go to Bullock, when you do start your Army or Air Force or whatever career, you can focus on it and not be like, I still need to kind of study for this, but I also want to get started in this. Like, no. You're done with this and you can move on. For me personally, I was supposed to go to Bullock in June, but I got it pushed to September and I spent that time in the middle doing a few things, but one of them was studying for the GMAT and I am so glad I did it. I was able to take a good amount of time to actually prepare and actually study and I was able to take it and be done with it before I showed up to Oklahoma for field artillery at Bullock. Taking the GMAT before was a huge weight off my shoulders and while I didn't know that I would be going to business school one day, I thought I might want to, I knew I now had the option to and I had a good score that would be competitive at any school I wanted to apply to. So as you can see after taking the GMAT or GRE, getting that out of the way, I suggest not even thinking about business school for the next three three and a half years. During this time, you really should just focus on your job, focus on growing, focus on getting those leadership opportunities, focus on leading your soldiers and helping them, focus on all of that kind of stuff. The more you do that, the more you're going to have strong learnings and stories and experiences that you'll be able to figure out, you know, how to message in everything for your application later. So don't, don't worry about that during this time, just focus on doing the best job you can. For me, I didn't think of business school once during this time. Frankly, I was so busy being a platoon leader and a million other things that it just didn't really cross my mind. It wasn't at all an area of focus for me. When you get to around May, April of the year that you plan to apply, I think that's when you should start looking into business schools, figuring out where you want to apply, what's important to you, all that kind of stuff. And I think you should narrow it down to two to six schools. Two because just applying to one school is not a smart idea and no more than six because if you're doing any more than six, I don't think you'll be able to put a real effort towards all your applications. So I think you should take the two to six schools that you've you've come up with and split them in half and apply to half of them in round one and half of them in round two. 
and don't put your top three schools in round one because just by doing the application process you're going to learn a lot so you don't want to mess up all your applications round one have all those learnings and now round two you have the schools that you didn't really want to go to also there's some schools that seem to favor people applying round one so i would more try to stack those ones in round one and play the game that way for me i totally messed this up initially i was only thinking about applying to two schools and i really didn't do much research at all i just kind of looked at a tier list and was like oh these these are apparently the top two or two of the top three so this is where I'm gonna apply to and frankly I had no idea what I was doing in round one of my applications and all the people who I asked to be my recommenders also didn't know because they didn't go to business school the army people I knew and the the army mentors I had didn't go to business school themselves so they didn't really understand how the, exactly the process was gonna go so I was just figuring it out myself and I didn't do a very good job of it but I got really lucky because when I did do more research and look into schools I found a few more that I was interested in going to and I was able to apply to those round two so once you have the list of schools that you're interested in it's time to start thinking back and brainstorming all those experiences and stories and who you are and where you're trying to go coming up with that narrative is really key for applications you really need to paint the picture of what you've done why you want to go to business school and how you're gonna use what you've done in end business school to get to where you want to go so take this time to come up with that narrative and then brainstorm stories you have that fit into it. For me, in my round one applications, I did a terrible job at this. I did not have a narrative at all. And I'm very confident that it's a big reason why I didn't even get an interview at either school. So take this time seriously and figure out what is your story? What do you want? Why do you want it? Okay, great. Here's things you've done that make it believable. Okay, so now you're doing applications round one. And it's definitely a good idea to do applications round one. One, because it can be advantageous in terms of getting into some of these schools. But two, if you do some applications round one, you should be able to get some interviews and maybe even get decisions before you even need to drop your refread or whatever it is for your branch to tell them you're getting out. If you are getting out, dropping your refread in that December, January timeline is ideal. And I'm gonna make a video to go over this because this is its own separate beast. But just trust me on that. It, that'll give you enough time to kind of get through the process, set up and do a, a CSP skill bridge internship during your last six months in the military and set you up for success. So real quick, a CSP or a career skills program slash skill bridge internship, people call it both things. It's a program where if you're in the military during your last six months of active duty, you can go and get paid by whatever branch you're from, but work as an unpaid intern anywhere. So even though I'm an artilleryman here at Fort Bragg, North Carolina in the Army, I'm working for a Silicon Valley startup and the Army's still paying me, but I'm getting all this frankly phenomenal experience. You're gonna wanna do it. So with this five year timeline, you're gonna be doing your round two applications and you're probably gonna be starting your internship around April. So hopefully by the time you start your internship, you should know kind of where you got in and where you, where you didn't and you've probably decided where you're gonna go to school. So around July, you should be finishing up your internship, coming back to your post base, whatever, and starting to clear before you go on terminal leave. Now, unfortunately, because you're on the five-year timeline, you probably won't have as much terminal leave. Your terminal leave will probably be eaten up by school starting, so you're really kind of getting out just in time to go to school, but you'll be set up for success for your transition. You'll probably have just done an internship, and you should be, you know, pretty good to go. Now, I know for a lot of branches for the Army, there's Triple C, Captain's Career Course, that you're probably going to have to try to squeeze in there somewhere in a way where you don't get an ad so for a year and it doesn't mess up your timeline and there's ways to do that like going to triple c a little on the earlier side and when you show up say hey i don't want to be pcs from here i'm going to get out of the military as soon as i can after this and a lot of times from what i've heard they'll set you up with some kind of a, a job on that base so you don't have to pcs and get another year ad so but that's going to be on you to figure out so real quick i want to go over kind of the pros and cons of this timeline and i'll start with the cons like I just talked about, you're almost certainly gonna have to figure out how to fit in triple C or whatever your captain's training is in there somewhere in a way that doesn't mess up your timeline. You're gonna have less flexibility with taking the GMAT in terms of you're probably gonna have to schedule a test date and take it. And if you have to redo it, you'll probably have to do it while you're at Bullock, which frankly isn't that bad because you could easily do it during Common Core, which is like the first month or so of Bullock. But it's better if you can just knock it out on the first try. And frankly, you won't have as quite as nice of a time getting out of the military as you would on the four-year timeline or if you're able to go to Bullock a little earlier on the front end, but 
that's just what it is. For the pros of this timeline, if you did ROTC and you took a scholarship, with this timeline, you'll have 60% of the GI Bill. Whereas if you did the four year timeline, which you could do, you wouldn't have any GI Bill. And having that 60% will translate to tens of thousands, maybe $100,000 in tuition and fees. Also with this timeline, you'll have more time to get experience to draw upon for your business school application. Now, once you get through all this and you get into business schools and you start kind of planning the rest of your life, you're gonna see that it's a lot. And frankly, it's something I'm going through right now. So follow me on Instagram. I kind of document you know, what I'm going through there on a daily basis. And I do a lot of ask me anything. But anyway, that was a lot of advice, but it was all advice I had gotten earlier. This was all stuff I had to figure out. A lot of it, I messed up. But it would be cool if I could go back and do the round one applications again. Frankly, I don't know if it would change anything because after looking at the schools, I'm really happy I got into and I'm gonna be going to Wharton. I kind of think it's the best fit for me, but it would be nice to have the option of the round one schools that I applied to as well. Between this video, the four year calendar, and the five things I wish I had known before applying to business school video, you should be pretty well set up for success as you go from military to MBA. Go ahead and please leave a like if you liked it. Comment anything, any questions you have, or any other kind of military to MBA videos you want me to make while I'm still in military to MBA mode. And of course, subscribe if you want to see me go through Warden and everything else. But anyways, that's all I've got for this week, guys. So until next time, keep killing it.